guys, today is the first day of modifying the E70X5M, and to I'm sure nobody's surprised, the first thing we're going to address is cooling. The car is already plenty fast, it has a lot of great options on it already, but it does run very, very hot, and that's something that can kill any car, no matter how well engineered. So we're going to hit that with a one-two punch of a lower temperature oil cooler valve and a lower temperature thermostat. Basically, these are the two objects that govern the temperature of your oil, and the temperature of your coolant. So by dropping them both down at the same time, they're going to work together instead of working against each other. These are both from N63 intake. They are extremely high quality. This oil cooler valve is made out of a solid chunk of titanium that is then milled down to fit the factory spec. And this thermostat is a BMW factory thermostat that is modified to open at a lower 80 degree C. So if a combination of the two should work really nicely. N63 Intake has done a great job on this, and they have helped me out with this video. So please, guys, go support them, help them out, support the people that support me. And if you don't believe me on this, Troy Jupp, who is a guru for these engines, both S65, S85, and S63, these are the same two parts that he installs on all of his engine builds. So... They are highly engineered, they work great together, they work great on this car, and they should be pretty easy to install because both of them just drop right in. This will be a three-part series. In part one, we're going to be doing the oil cooler valve while we change our oil. Part two, we're going to tackle the thermostat. And part three, we're going to do some odds and ends just to kind of play into these. We're going to do a lower pressure radiator cap off of a diesel X5. We're going to go ahead and send a sample off the Blackstone Labs just to see how our engine is doing. We'll do some water wetter, which is also recommended by Troy Jupp. It does a great job of just improving the efficiency of the cooling system and of the air-to-water intercoolers. We're going to do some fuel injector cleaner. I like to do that with every oil change just so I can do it kind of systematically, keeping on top of those direct injectors. Mine have been replaced, but still I want to take care of them. And of course we have a high-quality Molly filter and Liquid Molly 5W40 oil. So we'll go ahead and get the car up on ramps and we will start tackling our oil cooler valve. So other than the obvious of you know various ratchets and a torque wrench, the tools that you're going to need specifically to do this job on the E70 X5M is you're going to need one of these oil filter wrenches. It is a plastic housing. You can't grip onto it with any sort of plier or vice grip without problems of maybe just tearing it up or breaking a hole into it, so definitely get one of these, A, so you can torque it down properly with an inch-pound torque wrench, and B, that way you can get it in and out without any sort of damage, you'll never even know that you were in there. You will need a M14 hex key and an M8 hex key. This one you'll probably already have, you might even have just a regular Allen key that's this large, but the M18 I had to order. Of course you'll need the oil cooler valve. I'm also going to send off a Blackstone lab sample. For those of you who don't know what this is, you send them your oil sample and they can break it down to whatever extent that you want, let you know what bearing material is in there, and they can just give you a full rundown of what your oil is telling you about your engine. They can also tell you how you're doing on your oil intervals. Are you going too long? Are you going too short? So if you want to kind of work in what the best amount of time to use your oil is, you're trying to decide, do I want to go 3,000, 5,000, 7,000 miles? On a certain oil they can tell you and get you full usage of your oil without going too far and possibly damaging your engine so it's a great resource they will send you this for free you only pay once you send it back so we'll go over that when we get our oil of course molly filter and liquid molly we're using their 5w40 that's what's recommended for this engine and this green bottle the molly gen is great because if you have an oil leak you can use an ultraviolet light and this will glow under the ultraviolet for a short period of time. So you can put it in, run your car for a couple of days, and then look to see where the oil leak is actually coming from. So it is helpful for a diagnosis. And then of course, after that, it's just great oil. To get this out, it's pretty simple. All you're gonna do is right next to where the oil filter is, there is a place to put your M14. You're just gonna back that out and this will fall right out. There's a factory spring that you're gonna swap over from the other valve to this one and then you put everything back in and that's about all there is to it. But before we do that, because there is oil behind this, we'll go ahead, drain all the oil out, install this, and then we'll put our filter and everything back in. For the Blackstone's lab, make sure that you're getting this mid oil flow. So you don't want the stuff that's right at the bottom. You can just scoop it in there, get your little sample and bring it right back out. This is the sample container that fits inside of the container they send you. 
And then of course, they send you a little card telling you exactly what you're supposed to do. And you can fill out any information on another card that they provide. And they give you another card for your sample analysis, so you're gonna send this in as well. One thing to note that even though this is going on my wife's E70 X5M, these will fit on any N63 or S63 class of engine. So whether it's an M5, X5, regular 5 series, anything that's using those two engines, these will work all the way up to the current generation S63-4. These are a great option for any of them. All of them run hot. The reason they run hot is it gets better gas mileage and better emissions. But what that is doing is it's killing your hoses, it's killing your plastics, and it's just working your oil and cooling system really hard. So everything on there is wearing more and more. So BMW has better emission standards as an overall fleet and better gas mileage as an overall fleet. But they're not really concerned about how long the engine lasts. If you can bring down those oil and water temperatures to a more reasonable level, your hoses are going to last longer, your plastics are going to last longer, and ultimately your engine is going to last longer. It's going to consume less oil, you're going to have less issues overall, and your engine is going to last much longer than it would otherwise. It's going to save you a lot of maintenance headaches. And of course, if you're hard on your car and you're driving it hard, you have that much more window of safety so you can take it to the track, you can take it to the drag strip, you can take it down a mountain road or whatever you're doing and you have that much more margin to keep you in a safe temperature range before you have to back down a little bit. So here we are under the car over here towards the front of the engine. You can see we have our drain. This is where the oil is going to come out. This is where our M8 hex key is going to go in. Here's our oil filter housing. Of course, just for frame of reference, our transmission pan is right back here. And right up here is where our M14 is going to go. So we're going to pan up a little bit. You see right there, that's where your M14 is going to go. You're going to back that down, and that is where the factory oil cooler valve will be. And that's where we'll put our new one as well. So I'm going to go ahead, get the drain pan under here, drain our oil out, get our Blackstone lab sample from our midstream and get that all packaged up. Once I've got all the oil drained out of the way, I'll bring you in here and I'll show you how we're gonna install that valve. So the oil has all been drained. We have our drain plug back in with a new crush washer that was supplied with the filter. We still have the filter out. Right now it is soaking and getting ready to go back in, but before that, we're gonna put our oil valve in. So we can see it right here. It doesn't quite line up, but I can still get the M14 in there without having to remove the support plate. So we're going to reach up there, unscrew that. Some oil is going to come down, so I'm going to have the drain pan underneath me while I do it. But once we get it out, I did have to move this wire out of the way, FYI. It just clips on right here. So once you move this little clip, you can move the wire to get in there and get access. We're just going to carefully unwind this. It is under spring pressure, so just keep that in mind when you're releasing everything. I don't know how much pressure it is, but I'll let you know once it's out. But once we get everything out, we'll go over to the bench, switch over to our new valve, and I'll kind of explain things once we get over there. So we have removed the old oil cooler valve. You can see here is the big plug, which is where your M14 hex socket went in. It was on there pretty tight, so you're going to have to put quite a bit of pressure on it to get it to break loose. But once it was cracked loose, it came out super easy. I'm assuming it's just because this has been torqued down for 70,000 miles and 10 years, it was in there pretty good. Once it was cracked, it slid right out. I was just able to back it out with my fingers. I would definitely recommend removing the aluminum stiffening plate that is underneath the engine. Make it a lot easier to get to this. Even though I could get to it, it was at a bit of an angle. I couldn't get quite a straight shot to it. So I do think it'd be a little bit easier if you went ahead and removed that plate. Now to separate this, all we're going to do is just disassemble this one and put it onto here. It's going to sit like this, obviously. None of this is held in by anything other than pressure. So you can just pop the spring out and pop it onto our new one. And then we'll pull this straight up off of this little post here. And I would clean this up and lube it before you put everything on. So I'm going to get a little bit of liquid molly on here. Same thing for in here. Just go ahead and grease everything up and then slide it together. So let's get a little cap full. Which, speaking of which, same thing for the filter. You can't quite see it. Maybe you can, but the filter is filled almost all the way up with oil. And the oil has soaked all the way up to the filter. Just anything I can do to save a little bit of wear and tear on the engine. So take a little bit of spoonful of that. Okay. 
here we have our newly assembled valve. So it sits much higher on that post and that's what allows it to function at a different temperature. So it is supposed to sit higher like that. I did double check with the guy who makes it. Just wanted to make sure, but it does sit up higher. So I'm going to keep this old valve just in case. I mean, I don't see any reason to, but it's so small, it's not going to hurt anything. But we've got our new valve in there, fully titanium, should work perfectly. I'm very excited to take it on a test drive and check out that lower temperature. So all you have to do is just slide this back in the car. The spring is not particularly stiff. I mean, I can easily compress it with my hand. So getting it pressed back in there shouldn't be too difficult. But once this is pressed back in, we can slide back in our oil filter, fill everything up with the liquid molly, and we will be ready to go on a test drive. So the valve went in almost as easily as it came out. It was actually pretty easy to install even by hand. I did put slight pressure on it with the M14 and just start twisting it in. But it went in without any issue, nice and smooth. So now all that's left to do is to torque everything down. The proper torque procedure for everything, uh, the drain plug is 40 newton meters. The oil filter housing is 30 newton meters, back 180 degrees, and then final torque to 40 newton meters. Seems a little high for me on a plastic housing, but I'm not going to argue with BMW. And then this brass plug right here goes to 100 newton meters. For those of you who don't know, that is about 73 foot-pounds of torque, and this is about 30 foot-pounds of torque. But we'll get all those tightened down, we'll fill everything up with our liquid molly. Check our level inside and then we can go for a drive to see what our oil temperature settles at once we get to a cruising temperature. Alright guys, so we have the oil cooler valve installed. It was a super easy install, very high quality product, just drop right in. I didn't have any issues with it. Uh, if you were doing an oil change, I really think it would only add maybe five minutes of time to undo the other one, pop the other one back in. It was a really easy project. I don't see why anyone wouldn't do it. I mean, it's a very reasonably priced option. It only adds about five minutes of an oil change. You don't really need any specialty tools, just that one extra M14 uh, hex key socket that you might need if you don't already have one. Very, very easy to do. It does actually lower the oil temperature. I want to post a picture up in uh, some photo editing software so I can very precisely measure because the gauge on here isn't super precise. It stretches all the way from 120 degrees Fahrenheit up to 300. And normally the temperature gauge sits a little on the other side of that around what I'm guessing is about 215 degrees. And right now I'm guessing it's 205. I don't have a precise way of measuring that. The torque app does not allow me to measure oil temperature for some reason. So I have no way of seeing what the car is actually seeing. But once I put it on there and I measure out all the pixels, I should be able to easily give you an idea of how much change there actually was. If I had to guess right now, I would say it's about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which I would say is a worthwhile change. It might even be as much as 15 or 20. I just can't tell because the gauge isn't very precise. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, put the picture up in just a second. We'll do a little voiceover with it and I can give you an exact breakdown. Here you can see the temperature gauge in the X5M. The red arrow added is where the temperature usually sat before I put the gauge in. So it was somewhere around 224 degrees and it is now sitting a little bit below that mark at 203. So we can assume about a 20 degree temperature drop. Of course, I do not know how precise the gauge is. I don't know how realistic that temperature really is, but it is sitting lower than it was before, which for me, any temperature drop is going to be a win for how minimal effort and minimal cash invested in this modification. So combining that with the thermostat later, I do think we're going to see some very serious temperature drops, which should allow our engine to last that little bit longer. So for me, I am definitely going to say this is worth it. With that said, that concludes part one. Uh, we now have our oil temperature down where I think it should be. And next we're going to tackle the thermostat. Same thing, N63 intake for both of them. So I would appreciate it if you guys would support them and you know get your products from them. They really helped me out with this video, so it'd be great if you guys could help them out too. Really excited to see what the two of them do together by having a lower oil temperature and a lower coolant temperature. They should really work well together and maybe even keep even cooler than it is now. Right now with the oil temperature down in the low 200s, the coolant temperature is higher than that. So it might be heating the oil up a little bit. So we'll see how they work together. Like I said, stick around for part two. Of course, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those below. Hit that subscribe button. Check out the links in the description and I will see you guys next week.